Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place, and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together the vanity is found in your bulletin. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We'll read Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8 in unison. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to do what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contributes to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought 
for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all, beloved. Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh Fullness of God in helpless babe This gift of love And righteousness Scorned by the ones He came to save Till on that cross As Jesus died wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world and darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can never pluck me from his hand Till he returns for calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand Till he returns For calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. 
You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, the only problem I really have with loving my neighbor is that God gave me a very, I don't know, tough group of neighbors to deal with. If God had wanted me to love my neighbor, then God should have, I don't know, given me lovable neighbors. Um, I think the only problem with that theory is that my neighbors probably feel the same. Neighbor being a pretty broad term, and especially these days when, you know, by social media, I see all sorts of people all the time if I dip into that. I became more aware of that recently when I was on vacation and I uh, intentionally dropped back from Facebook for a time. And when I go back to it, I see, well, there's kind of a level of meanness, honestly. And it's hard. And it, what's really difficult for me is I see people with very opposite opinions. That's fine but expressing them in ways that have such an edge to them and both of the people expressing those opinions are people that I, I love, that I care about, that, I, that I, I want to see what's going on in their daily lives and I'm actually interested in what they think about things. And as I return to work and a little bit of engaging on Facebook to post this or that, to look a little, I come to this reading from Romans. And, and Paul, it's really, really quite interesting the way it just, just spoke directly. You know, there's a, a passage of Scripture that when you've read it before, it has nothing to do with the, with the circumstances we now face, and you hit it anew. And, and just listen to this. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. And, and so there is good and evil in the world. There is right and wrong. Not just anything goes. But what does it mean if I start to look at something somebody's writing that I, that I care about and, and I'm tempted to see their view as evil, I could start to see them as on the side of evil. We can move from, from not liking what we see to demonizing the person who says it. And that's a far step away from Jesus teaching us that the essence of the gospel is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And so these are challenging times to me. And I suspect that we all know that it's going to get a little worse before it gets better as any election season can be heated. But an election season in the midst of pandemic where everything has become political is just hard. It's just hard. And so I think about Paul and I, and I think about that, you know, when he's talking about this, Paul had experienced things that I will never experience in my life. I have seen church folks be hard on each other. I've seen goss gossip want to tear apart a church in our diocese and other dioceses. But I have never experienced something like Paul going into a town as a, someone raised as a faithful Jew. He goes into the synagogue. They ask him to teach and he begins to preach and teach. And across a series of weeks, they get uncomfortable with the message that he has, this message that Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah who has been crucified and resurrected for our salvation. And they kick him out of the church. And this isn't a church fight like anything I've ever seen. They end up 
having him arrested, brought before the authorities, given to 40 lashes minus one. He ends up beaten and left for dead sometimes. Paul, this Paul, really knows what it's like to see a community fractured, torn apart, wanting to get at each other. And this Paul writes to a church that he knows will face real persecution. He says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be a haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And then listen to this. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And all for Paul includes the very Romans who are persecuting him. For Paul, even Caesar, who would put him to death by beheading, was a neighbor who he needed to love as he loved our Lord. And so I see that as a challenge. The, the, the truth is, I can't affect world events. I can barely affect Diocese of Georgia events, truthfully. But I can change my behavior. I can change my behavior to reflect the love that I feel. I was thinking about that this week. I was shocked and heartbroken by Jacob Blake being shot seven times in the back by a police officer. I can't, I can't even. And then the killings that have happened during protests after that, uh, heartbreaking. And yet, God has put me in relationship with people so that it makes it hard for me to do the thing I might otherwise be tempted to do and demonize the police. Uh, 20 years ago, I met Jim Proctor when he was a major in the uh, sheriff's office in Camden County, and I, I love him. Love him and his family, known them for years. Jim's now sheriff of Camden County, and he and I used to spend a lot of time sitting in his office drinking coffee and talking or at church. I've talked to him since I've been in this position and since, well, the death of Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. And we talked about what it means to be a policeman at this time. And because he's in my Facebook feed, I also see where he posts so often of police being killed and the danger that they face. This doesn't mean that the outrage I feel at, at a killing that seems so unjust it can't still be outrage. It doesn't mean that I can't long for a better world, but it means that I don't get the easy out of demonizing the police. Instead, I'm left with the difficult task of understanding that everyone, everyone that God is in communion with is someone I am in communion with by relate my connection to God. And so in this political season, it's not that you can't say your prayers, come to hard political decisions that you feel firm about that are very different from someone else. You don't need to be in the middle of the road. I'm not asking you that everything is good. You can have your position and take it, but how can we have our position firmly and still be in community with, well, all our, all our friends and neighbors? How do we live in this time that could be such a mean time if we don't watch it? and do so in a way that expresses the real love that God has for me and you and the love that we're to have for each other. And it is not easy. It is very difficult and it, and it promises to get more difficult. But in this world that just seems so torn apart, the one thing I can do is not break community with the people I love who come from a different place than I do. Because what I have found in my life is that they are a gift. It is a real gift to me to, that there have been people that I disagree with strongly in many ways that I have served alongside in a soup kitchen or built a habitat house for, and I know that they love God, and I know they're trying to love their neighbors as themselves just like I am. And we may have very different opinions, and I may be tempted in my worst days to think their opinion is evil and mine is good. But the truth is no political system is going to bring about the kingdom of God, and all of us fall short. But the way we get closer is the way that we open up our hearts and minds when we see something that we're tempted to, from someone that makes us want to think of them as other, 
to realize that our Lord loves them as much as our Lord loves me and you, and that it's our hearts and minds that need to be open to staying in relationship with people. The great gift of church is that in every church in the Diocese of Georgia, I know you guys, you're worshiping together with people you don't agree with all the time. And you miss them when you're gone and they pray for them when they're sick. And that is a gift to us, a gift of being in community with people who are different and knowing that God is in the midst of it. I don't have everything right and you don't have everything right, but anytime we push away our neighbor, we have moved away from the God who made us and loves us and wants to see us all in the kingdom. Amen. Let's reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue our prayers with suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you've made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now invite your prayers and thanksgivings. I give thanks for St. Matthew's Church for the witness it's been in Fitzgerald for so long. I pray for Halleck, their priest, for their lay leaders and parishioners, especially in this pandemic. Ground of our being, Mother of life, Father of the universe. Your name is sacred, beyond speaking. pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me this week for worship from St. Matthew's Church in Fitzgerald. I hope you'll make time next Sunday at 10 to join us again for our worship. Thanks and have a great week.